Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today I just want to kind of talk just briefly on my experiences of switching from the M1 Mac Mini base model to the M1 Pro MacBook Pro base model. Because I feel like that might be quite a logical switch for a lot of people from going from the M1 to the M1 Pro, especially those of you out there with not as much money to drop on like the M1 Max. So yeah, I'm just gonna talk about my experiences. But before we get into that, if you enjoy filmmaking tutorials and creating just in general, maybe consider subscribing down below and hitting a thumbs up on this video or don't. Whatever. So I guess I'll talk to you guys about what I use my computers for. I do video editing for YouTube. I also edit client videos and the majority of these videos are pretty standard, you know, some cool transitions for motion graphics, nothing super highly effects intensive. And so that's what I use the M1 Mac mini for a lot, as well as photo editing and photo manipulation in Photoshop ever so slightly a little bit of gaming, mainly emulated gaming. And then I also did very, very slight visual effects work. Uh, a lot of it just for myself, but some client work as well, but nothing super intensive. So that's what I was using the M1 Mac mini for. And that was the base model. So 256 gig hard drive, eight gigabytes of RAM, the, just the cheapest you could get. Now, the reason I switched to the 14 inch MacBook Pro is because basically I just found myself with the opportunity to work away from my desk more often. And sometimes it's nice to be able to go to a coffee shop and work or whatever it is. And so I wanted to get a laptop, but I didn't want to get the M1 laptop because I did find that the M1 Mac mini was just lacking a little bit of GPU power. Like it was really, really good, but anything more intensive. So a lot of effects, the visual effects work in Blender that I was doing, like it just, it would start to bog down quite badly especially in Blender. And so I knew the MacBook Pros were coming out and I knew I wanted to wait. When this one came out, the price is definitely what sort of pushed me to the base model first, but also the M1 was probably like 95% of the way there for me in terms of performance. It was doing really well for the majority of the work that I did, just that little 5% of like really graphical intense. So when I saw that these had a better GPU, but still like the insane power that the M1 had, I was like, this makes sense. Like, I don't need to go to the best of the best. Although that would obviously be better, I'm probably not gonna utilize the power it has. So that's why I picked this one up and it is doing really well. Now, I will say that the base model here that I have is really good at everything I just mentioned. So video editing, photo editing, Lightroom, all that sort of stuff, very light blender work. But again, with the GPU intensive things, it still sort of bogs down, but I definitely, I can go way further than I could on the M1. And I think for those of you who are thinking of switching from the M1 to these new MacBook Pros, you just really need to ask yourself, are you pushing the limits of the M1 chip already? If that is a no, then you don't really have to update unless you are looking at getting a laptop because you have the M1 Mac mini or you know whichever. I understand that sometimes having the newest and latest and greatest can be a bit of a draw. But yeah, if you're not pushing the M1, there is real no need to go to these M1 Pros or M1 Maxes. But if you are capping out on certain tasks, then yeah, for sure, there are reasons to go to these laptops. Obviously the design is fantastic and all that sort of stuff. But performance wise, I find that the M1 chip was so good at so many things, except for GPU intensive tasks. So visual effects that I did, graphic intensive video work. So things like with a lot of transitions and motion graphics and all that sort of stuff, that's where the M1 would bog down. So if that is what you do, and you find that the M1 is really good, but starts to struggle, then yes, I think upgrading would be a good option. I would only go for the base model if you are only at the precipice of pushing the M1 chip to what it can do. If you are very easily maxing out the power of the M1, then I would probably go M1 Max or at least a more, or like the higher version of the M1 Pro. Like I said, me personally, I wasn't pushing it enough to warrant the extra money it would cost to go to those higher end GPU and CPU options for these new chips, but I was pushing it just enough for me to make this a logical purchase. Remember, if it's not gonna make your life easier, if it's not gonna make things faster dramatically, then the cost to entry for these laptops doesn't make sense because you're gonna be spending a lot of money and the return is not there. Whereas for myself, I'm editing faster, I'm getting more work done because it's portable because I was at the time locked to the desk so now it's more portable as well, so I can do work more often, and I'm able to do the visual effects work without as many hiccups as before. So cost-wise, it makes sense for me to have this laptop. It might not for you. Don't let FOMO push you to making the wrong decision just because it's a brand new machine that looks really good. Anyway, this is a really quick video, guys. I just wanted to give you my thoughts on upgrading from the M1 Mac Mini to the M1 Pro. For the majority of you out there, the M1 is actually gonna do fantastic, and you yourself would know if you need to upgrade to these chips here. 
If you enjoyed the video, guys, make sure you subscribe down below and hit the thumbs up button for more videos. And yeah, that's it. See ya.